There are always ideas out there of mm. how to do things differently, um, but that getting those ideas into the mainstream to change the mm -hmm. mainstream is what occurs perhaps infrequently. And going back again to the the noises being made and the mm. moves being made in, as the global financial crisis recedes, governments are trying to change financial regulation systems, but they're not really challenging the systems overall, no. are they? I mean, would you be suggesting they should be? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, but I, I think that, that it would be it would be wrong to expect governments to to, to bite the hand that feeds them these days. Uh, I mean, I, 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 particularly in the United States, for example, one shouldn't be surprised that the, the, that the government has taken some fairly mealy mouth steps to uh, to reforming the financial system. Uh, I, I think that, that the kinds of tr transformation that we need needs to be citizen driven. And, and again, the good news is not only do these ideas float uh, in you know, in the ether of, of, sort of economic textbooks, but they're being implemented on the ground in the United States. And, and we should talk about the concrete examples because in yes, the United sir. States, for example, um, the, the there are now 60 million people who uh, who are over Christmas unable to afford to buy a meal. 60, one in five people in the richest country on earth. Uh, and that's you know that that's that's that's, that's an it, extraordinary statistic. It is. I mean, we, we were we were blown who, who away. Who came up with that statistic? Well, th th that was a survey uh, done over Christmas by uh, food you know, by food policy groups. Um, but the the U.S. government itself uh, admitted that in 2008, 49.2 million Americans were food insecure, and it just it has gotten worse since 2008 because the crisis has, has endured. Um, now, I actually think that that along with many uh, economists, that, that we're not out of the woods yet. That we're in a double dip. Uh, recession that, that that actually the worst is yet to come, um, and with that in mind, a lot of citizens in the United States have been organising not only to sort of feed the hungry with uh, at food banks, but to banish hunger in their communities forever. And the way they're doing that is by getting together in what are called food policy councils, spaces where you have someone from the government, you have local farmers, you have local businesses, you have uh, farm workers, you have unions uh, represented. You also have um, people worried about what kids are eating in school. You have parents, you have activists. Um, and all together, they're negotiating ways in which you can you know, use public land differently. And you can you know, start getting community gardens, you can start getting living wages for people to be able to afford food so that you know you, people can afford the two hundred dollar burger or whatever it is um but it, it, it's through the, the sort of organizing around community and organizing around uh, actually taking food out of the price mechanism and ensuring that food is not a commodity but a human right uh, it's through organizations like food policy councils that i'm seeing a great deal of concrete and on the ground change there are other problems and issues that arise that uh, a lot of people put a lot of store in the capitalist system to be able to deal with. From mm. Thinking about climate change, we've spoken to people on this um, program before who say they ultimately have faith uh, that the West in particular will be able to address this system because because of the very capitalist system that is based on, that that is the answer to dealing with this. I, I mean, I, I think asking markets to fix climate change is liking, like, like, like asking the iceberg to save the Titanic. Uh, in many ways, the reason we're in this mess is because markets systematically need not to pay for the environmental costs that, 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 that they are able to uh, to But to what is the other way of fixing it quickly enough without the market driven? Well, I mean, I, I think that, that, that I mean, that there's always a, a desire to have one single solution to be able to fix all of this. And I think what we need is a suite of solutions. We, we, you know, having one thing like cap and trade uh, is, is, I mean, the, cap and trade is demonstrably a bad idea. We've had it in Europe and it really hasn't worked very well. But what we do need is not only a cap on climate emissions, but also uh, you know, transfer, massive transfers of, of wealth from rich countries to poor countries to get you know, countries like uh, Austria, like, like uh, China and, uh, and, and India off a coal, you know, a, a coal fired transition. Um, we need investment in alternative energy. We need... Sure, but you need price signals in that, don't you? Need a carbon price signal to make that happen. And, and a cap would work. It just doesn't seem like the trade part of cap and trade is a very sensible idea. The only groups uh, in Europe that have benefited from benefited from this are coal, nuclear, and banks. Uh, consumers haven't done very well, and the environment, uh, you know, the the the, the stimulus that, that price signals were meant to, to to provide really hasn't arrived in Europe. So it, it seems to me that yes, we need price signals, but and we need investment. But it, it seems to me that that, that uh, markets and banks in particular are, are the last people to be asking to make those investments. As always, there's plenty of ideas in this new book. Raj, thanks very much for joining us thanks again so much, on Breakfast. Thanks so much, Take care. Raj Patel, and his latest book is called The Value of Nothing, How to Reshape Market Society and Redefine Democracy. And as you heard just then, he's got plenty of ideas on that front. He's a guest of the Sydney Writers' Festival. It's 17 past eight.